Red flag, 2024. An F-15EX pilot just smoked three Eurofighters in a simulated engagement before they even knew he was there. The Typhoon guys landed furious. They had better jets, well, at least on paper. Better turn rates, newer missiles, more agility. But you know what they didn't have? The one thing that actually wins modern air combat. And it's not what Top Gun taught you. I'm going to show you exactly what the F-15 pilot knew that the Europeans didn't and why it matters for every Air Force buying fighters today. All right, so you stuck around. Smart move, because what I'm about to show you might change how you think about fighter jets. Right now, Air Forces are writing massive checks. Poland just ordered 32 F-15s. Qatar picked the F-15. Even in 2025, the Eagle's production line is buzzing. Meanwhile, the Eurofighter, this beautifully engineered European masterpiece, can barely sell outside its home nations. Get this wrong and you end up with hangars full of jets that look great in brochures but fall apart when the shooting starts. That's wasted money and real risk for pilots. So why does a jet design when Nixon was president still beat Europe's $100 million superfighter? Not in a Top Gun dogfight, but in the missions that actually matter. I've spent three years buried in this world. Red flag debriefs at Nellis, maintenance crews from both jets, even my cousin who flew F-15Cs out of Kadena. And here's the truth. Both jets are exceptional. The Typhoon is a Porsche 911, precise, agile, deadly up close. The F-15 is a Ford F-350 with a missile wreck, loud, old school, and impossible to kill. But this isn't about airshow glamour. It's about mission flexibility, logistics, and the math of keeping jets flying. A Polish liaison officer said it best when I asked why they picked the Eagle over more Typhoons. Because we counted the missiles, that line changed everything. So here's what we're covering. Payload capacity, operational logistics, and upgrade pathways. And then the one thing the Typhoon absolutely destroys the F-15 at. Let's start with those missiles, because when Poland counted them, the numbers were wild. Remember that Polish officer, the one who said we counted the missiles? Here's what he meant, because this is where things really start to separate these two jets. Modern air combat isn't about cinematic dogfights. It's about shooting from distance, hitting multiple targets, and having the fuel to get home. If your jet can't carry enough missiles or bombs, or enough gas to use them, you don't finish the mission. Get this wrong, and your $100 million fighter becomes a very shiny lawn ornament waiting for a tanker. The F-15EX can haul 13.6 tons of ordnance, nearly 30,000 pounds. The Eurofighter Typhoon tops out at 9. The F-15EX has 12 hardpoints, the Typhoon has 8, and those extra stations matter. A fully loaded F-15X can take to war 12 AMRANs, 8 JDAMs, 3 external tanks, EW pods, and still have fuel to loiter. The Typhoon? 8 to 10 missiles, maybe 6 bombs. But every time you add weapons, you lose fuel tanks. Add fuel tanks, you lose weapons. It's constant trade-offs. The F-15 is a pickup with a full bed, trailer hitch, and spare fuel strapped to the sides. The Typhoon is a sports car. Fast, precise, but constantly stopping for gas and running out of space. Combat radius is where the gap widens. F-15EX, around 1,100 nautical miles. Typhoon, around 850 nautical miles. In the Pacific, that 250-mile difference is enormous. From Guam, the F-15EX can strike a target 1,000 miles away and still return. The Typhoon needs tanker support, sometimes two tankers, just to complete the same mission. Lose the tanker and the Typhoon swimming. Most Eurofighter missions are air policing, scramble, intercept, escort, land, short hops. For that, the Typhoon is perfect, but the F-15EX was built for long-range strike, deep interdiction, and Pacific operations where the nearest runway might be on the other side of the ocean. One jet is built for sprints, the other is built for marathons. At Red Flag 2024, the F-15EX arrived with a flying battleship loadout. Typhoon pilots had to choose, missiles or fuel. They couldn't carry both. The F-15EX hit simulated targets 600 miles out and came home with fuel in reserve. The Typhoons turned back at 400 miles when they hit bingo. In a close-in dogfight, the Typhoon will outrun the F-15 all day. But modern air combat isn't Top Gun. It's who sees first, shoots first, and carries enough missiles to finish the job. And the F-15EX wins that fight every single time. Countries know this. Poland, Qatar, Singapore. They ran the math. They chose the Eagle. But raw payload doesn't matter if the jet's stuck in a hangar. 
Which brings us to the second reason the eagle still dominates, and the part Eurofighter brochures really hope you don't ask about. Okay, so the F-15 can haul more bombs and fly farther, but here's the question nobody asks in the promo videos. What happens when it breaks? Because jets break, all of them. Their machines doing Mach 2 at altitude. Stuff fails constantly. The sticker price is just chapter one. After you buy that $100 million jet, you still have to fly it, train on it, fix it, and upgrade it for the next 30 years. That's lifestyle cost, and it's where the Typhoon's beautiful engineering becomes a financial migraine. Get lifestyle cost wrong, and you end up burning billions while half your fleet sits in a hangar waiting on parts stuck somewhere between Germany and Spain. Cost numbers you never see in the brochure. Cost flight per hour, F-15EX, around $29,000. Typhoon, around $18,000 to $24,000. On paper, the Typhoon looks cheaper, but that number hides the real killer, parts commonality and logistics. The F-15EX shares 70% of its parts with legacy Eagles. The Air Force has been maintaining F-15s for nearly 50 years. There are warehouses full of parts, crew chiefs who know the jet in their sleep, and supply chains that run like clockwork. Need a component? You call Boeing, or you pull it from the Arizona Boneyard it shows up fast. The Typhoon? It's built by four different nations, Germany, Italy, Spain, and the UK. Which means every part, every software update, every major fix becomes a committee meeting. The F-15 is like owning a Ford truck. Any parts store has what you need. The Typhoon is like owning a custom import where four dealerships have to agree on which bolts you're allowed to buy. The F-15EX has a digital backbone. Plug and play everything. New radar, new EW suite, even future hypersonic weapons? Bolt them in. The Typhoon has three tranches, three generations that barely share upgrade compatibility. Every improvement requires approval from four governments, four budgets, and four sets of politicians. It takes years. Mission capable rate, USF-15 fleet, between 70 and 75%. RAF Typhoons, often between 40 and 50%. Half the Typhoon fleet is broken at any given time, not because the maintainers are bad, but because they're waiting on parts or international sign-offs. A former RAF tech told me the biggest frustration was waiting. Once they waited six months for a single avionics component because of contract disputes and multinational paperwork. He told me, if it were an F-15, we'd have it in a week. The F-15 isn't easy to maintain. Crew chiefs have the scars to prove it, but you can fix it and you can get the parts. Lifestyle cost for the Typhoons runs 50 to 70% higher over 30 years. That's billions of extra dollars. Countries notice. Poland, Israel, Singapore, they crunched their numbers. They picked the Eagle. The Typhoon looks cheaper up front, but over decades, the F-15's parts commonality and upgrade flexibility make it the value buy, not the bargain buy, the value buy. And before Typhoon fans light up the comments, Yes, there's one thing the Eurofighter does better than the F-15. It's real, it's significant. But the twist? It might not matter as much as you think. All right, here's where I'm gonna lose a few of you because the Eurofighter Typhoon does beat the F-15 at something important. In a close-in, turning, burning dogfight, the Typhoon will beat the Eagle, and it's not even close. Its Delta Canard layout gives it incredible agility. The upgraded Tranche 3 engines give it a better thrust to weight ratio, it points its nose faster, and in within visual range combat, Europe's Iris T and ASRAM missiles outperform the AIM 9X with higher off bore sight capability and better seekers. Pilots at Nellis say the same thing. If a typhoon gets its nose on you at the merch, you're in trouble. Because right after saying that, they add, That's why we eliminate them at 40 miles with an AMRAM. When's the last time a major conflict was decided by a fourth gen turning fight? Desert Storm was over 30 years ago, and most kills were beyond visual range. Modern combat is simple. See first, shoot first, carry enough missiles to keep shooting. The Typhoon is a better knife fighter. The F-15 is the better sniper. The F-15EX's APG-82 radar has better range, better tracking, and better multi-target engagement. Paired with the AIM-120D, it can prosecute targets nearly 100 miles out. EPAWS gives it world-class electronic warfare protection. The Typhoon's radar is excellent, the Meteor missile is fantastic, but the F-15 sensors, fusion, and payload give it the edge where most modern engagements happen, long before the merge. One pilot told me, the Typhoon's a Ferrari, the F-15's a diesel truck with a missile launcher in the back. Then he said, guess which one wins the war? 
Here's the uncomfortable part. Neither jet survives in truly contested airspace. The J-20, Su-57 and even the F-35 will kill both long before they know what hit them. That's why the F-15EX doesn't pretend to be stealthy. It works with stealth fighters. F-22s and F-35s clear the skies and knock down air defenses. The F-15EX follows with 13 tons of bombs and finishes the job. The Typhoon tries to be a multi-role solution. Air superiority, air policing, ground attack. It shines in quick reaction intercepts and European air defense. But deep strike under stealth cover? Long-range combat? High-end Pacific operations? That's not what it's built for. The Typhoon is an incredible aircraft optimized for missions modern warfare barely uses anymore. Close-in dogfights and air policing are peacetime tasks, not peer war doctrine. The F-15 is ugly, old and unapologetic, but optimized for what air forces actually need today. Payload, range, sensors and integration with stealth aircraft. The Typhoon isn't a bad jet, far from it. For European air defense, it's perfect. But for nations that need to project power across oceans or sustain high-end combat for decades, they buy the F-15. And Poland's choice proves it. They ran the war games. Payload and range mattered more than agility. So now we've covered payload, maintenance and dogfighting doctrine. But there's still one big question. If both jets cost over $100 million, why does the F-15 keep winning contract after contract? Let's tie everything together. So here we are. You came wondering why a jet design in the 1970s keeps beating a $100 million European superfighter. The answer is simple. Mission fit. Both jets are impressive, both cost over $100 million, but the F-15EX keeps winning contracts because it solves the problems modern air forces actually face. Payload, 50% more ordnance. Range, 250 extra nautical miles. Maintenance, a 50-year supply chain that actually delivers parts. Upgrades, a digital backbone built for plug-and-play systems. The Typhoon is a phenomenal interceptor, perfect for European air policing and quick reaction alerts. But if you need to project power across oceans, fly deep strike missions under stealth cover, and keep the jet viable for the next 30 years, you buy the F-15. That's not bias, that's math. And countries like Poland, Singapore, and Israel proved it. Now I want to hear from you, former pilots, crew chiefs. If you had to take one jet into a real shooting war tomorrow, which would you pick and why? Until then, keep your airspeed up and your situational awareness high.